Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Juan Santos, one of my general tier patrons. Juan has been helping support this show for over a year now, and I truly couldn't do this without amazing patrons like him. And today, he's going to handle the first part of the intro for me. Hey Mitch, this is Juan from Texas. I just wanted to say keep up the fantastic work you're doing. And also because of you and your videos, you're one of the few reasons why I started playing Commander in the first place. Uh, so for my deck tech, I would like for you to see about building around General Tazuri, uh, focusing on allied tribal with blink effects. So as Juan said, today's deck tech is going to be built around General Tazri with allied tribal and blink effects. General Tazri is a 3-4 human ally that costs 4 and a white. When she enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an ally creature card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. And then by paying Wooburg, ally creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of colors among those creatures. So Tazri can get us the exact ally that we need for the situation that we're in. And there are a ton of allies that have some great enter the battlefield effects. We can get a ton of value from blinking her and our other allies too. This commander and theme can be very powerful and was a ton of fun to build around. So again, thank you Juan, and this episode is dedicated to you. So what's our strategy with this deck? We're going to fill our board with allies and blink them for Enter the Battlefield effects. In general, allies trigger not only when they enter, but whenever another ally enters too. So the more allies that we have on board, the more value we get when we blink one. And then how do we win with this deck? We're going to demolish, drain, or mill our opponents with our ally army. We've got a variety of ways to win with this deck, and we can win very quickly once we're set up. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So it's time to start with tactic number one, Supply Drop. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which you can pay two and tap and sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Next up, there's Rampant Growth, which is going to get you a basic land into play tapped. Edge of Autumn does the exact same thing, but only if you control four or fewer lands, but you can cycle it by sacrificing a land. And then Farseek lets you search your library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Next up, there's Cultivate and Kadama's Reach, each of which do the exact same thing. You search your library for two basic lands, one goes into your hand, and one goes onto the battlefield tapped. And then there's Pillar of Origins, which can tap to add one man of any color to our mana pool, but we can only use that mana to cast ally spells. Next up, there's Felwar Stone, which can tap to add one mana of any color that a land and opponent controls could produce. We're also running a few allies that can actually help ramp us, too. First, there's Beast Caller Savant, which has haste, and it can tap to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, but we can only use that mana on creature spells. And then Harvest Druid can tap to add X mana of any one color to our mana pool, where X is the number of allies we control. With the number of allies that we run in this deck, this can tap for a ton of mana once we get going. And finally, there's Cryptolith Rite, which pretty much turns all of our creatures into mana dorks. It says creatures you control have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. The more allies that we have in play, the more mana that we can generate because of this. But what are some of those allies that are going to be in this deck? Let's go over them now in tactic number two, Rally Around. First up, there's Chasm Guide, which is the first ally that we're seeing with Rally. Rally is actually an ability that's specific to the ally creature type. So let's use Chasm Guide as an example for how this works. It says, Rally, whenever Chasm Guide or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So essentially when Chasm Guide comes into play, our creatures gain haste. And then later on, if Chasm Guide's still in play and another ally comes into play, our creatures also gain haste from that. So you can see how Rally would be especially effective in an ally deck built around blink effects. But let's move forward and see what other kinds of Rally effects we have. McKinney Patrol is going to give all of our creatures vigilance. So like Chasm Guide, this allows us to be aggressive, but in a different way. Chasm Guide lets us attack right away, and McKinney Patrol ensures that we can still block. Next up, there's Core Blade World, which is going to give all of our creatures first strike. This is a fantastic way to protect our creatures and make it much more difficult for our opponents to block or attack us. Next up, there's Lantern Scout and Talus Paladin, which are very similar. Lantern Scout gives all of our creatures lifelink. And then whenever Talus Paladin or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may have allies you control gain lifelink until end of turn, and you may put a plus one plus one counter on Talus Paladin. Lifelink can be a fantastic way to give us a nice buffer so we can feel comfortable attacking. And finally, there's Hero of Gomathada, which has Rally for Indestructible. 
In this deck especially, this card makes it very hard for our opponents to deal with our creatures at all. If someone tries to cast a board wipe, we can simply blink one of our creatures to save our entire board. And as long as we can cast or blink an ally on our turn, this makes attacking very easy. It's very hard for our opponents to deal with indestructible creatures coming at them. But we've got plenty of other ways to make combat difficult for our opponents. Let's go over them now in tactic number 3, hit them hard. For a set this core entanglers, which has whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. So with this, we can take out our opponent's best blockers or even one of their attackers on their turn if we have a blink spell. And Fire Mantle Mage also makes blocking difficult since it has Rally for Menace. Some other ways to get our creatures through are Kabir, Evangel, and Seascape Aerialist. When Kabir, Evangel, or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, we can choose a color. If we do, allies we control gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. By choosing the right color, we can get our creatures through, or we can use it to protect them too. And then Seascape Aerialist is going to give our allies flying. And again, by using a blink spell can help us with blocking flyers too. Now if we can't get around our opponent's creatures, we can always go through them with something like Andu Champion. Because Andu Champion has Rally for Trample. And this deck's got plenty of ways to make some huge creatures. Hata Freeblade might start off small, but it grows very quickly in this deck. And Turn Timber Ranger's also going to grow, but it's also going to grow our army. Because on top of getting a plus one plus one counter, it creates a wolf. Next up, we've got some creatures that can pump our entire team, though. A cool and battle singer has, whenever it or another ally enters battlefield under your control, you may have ally creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. And then Tadra Warcaller says, whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus two plus two until end of turn. And Kazul Warlord has, whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on each ally you control. On top of all these fantastic pump effects, remember that our commander can actually pump our entire team, too. But perhaps the most impactful of all these is Resolute Blademaster, which has Rally for Double Strike. So this can essentially double up the amount of damage that we do. Now, like I mentioned before, combat is just one way that we can win. So what are some non-combat ways that we can wipe out our opponents? Let's go through them now in tactic number four, take them down. First up, there's Balaget Thief, which we can use to strip our opponent's hands clean. Because whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, target player reveals a number of cards in their hand equal to the number of allies we control. Then we get to choose one of them, and that player discards that card. So we start by taking their best cards, and then at a certain point, we can just take everything else. Next up, there's Marasa Pyromancer, which can help us take out our opponent's creatures. Whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, we can have Marasa Pyromancer deal damage to our creature equal to the number of allies we control. So this can help protect us, as well as clear a path for our creatures, too. And then there's Tuk Tuk Scrapper, which can deal with our opponent's artifacts on top of dealing damage. Whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, we can destroy target artifact. And if that artifact is put into a graveyard this way, Tuk Tuk Scrapper deals damage to that artifact's controller equal to the number of allies we control. At a certain point, our opponents won't even want any artifacts in play for fear that we're going to ping them for a ton. But we can also drain our opponents too with Colostra Healer and Hagrid Diabolist. Whenever Colostra Healer or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. Hagrid Diabolist has an even bigger effect though because whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, we can have target opponent lose life equal to the number of allies we control. With this, some allies and some blink effects, it won't take long for us to finish off our opponents. And if we need to go a different route, we can actually just mill them with Halimar Excavator. It says whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, target player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard where X is the number of allies we control. Again, thanks to the incredible amount of allies that we're running and our blink effects, it won't take long for us to mill our opponents out. And we're not quite done with our ally army just yet. So let's go through pretty much the rest in tactic number 5, Calling All Allies. For set, there's Munda Ambush Leader, which says whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may look at the top 4 cards of your library. If you do, reveal any number of ally cards from among them, then put those cards on top of your library in any order and the rest on the bottom in any order. So if we just want to draw into allies, this can help us filter through the top of our library. Next up, there's Unified Front, which is going to create 4 ally tokens for us most of the time. And Captain's Claw says whenever a quick creature attacks, put a 1 1 white core ally creature token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Next is Retreat to Ameria, which has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield, under your control, choose one. Put a 1 1 white core ally creature token onto the battlefield, or creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. So this can either help expand our army and get us some triggers, or it can even pump our army too. Next up, there's a regular cohort, which is technically an ally that creates an ally when it comes into play. And getting two triggers from one creature spell can be a huge deal for this deck. Some other cards that can come in big for this deck are Jawar Shapeshifter and Mirror Image. Jawar Shapeshifter is a clone specifically for allies, and Mirror Image can be a copy of any creature that we control. So these can come in huge and help us double up on some of our best rally effects. And while all this is happening, a card like Andu Clear can help keep us alive. Because whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, we can gain life equal to the number of allies we control. This is a very simple but effective way to pad our life total. And finally, another card that can provide a ton of value for us is Seagate Lore Master. By tapping it, we draw a card for each ally we control. This is a fantastic target for our commander to tutor for. And again, once our commander's in play, all we have to do is blink our commander and we get to tutor and we get those rally effects too. So now let's move on to tactic number 6, Don't Blink. First up, we've got some 1 mana blink effects with Essence Flux, Cloud Shift, and Ephemerate. 
Each of these are going to exile target creature we control and return it right back to the battlefield. And Ephemerate is definitely the most effective of these since it has rebound. So for just one mana, we blink a creature twice. And then at two mana, we're running Turn to Mist and Momentary Blink. And we can actually flash back Momentary Blink for three in a blue. Next up, we've got Ghostly Flicker, Displace, and Illusion Stratagem, which can each blink two creatures. And Illusion Stratagem will also draw us a card. Now, these blink effects are fantastic and provide a ton of value for this deck. But outside of Ghostly Flicker, every single one of them can be even more powerful. And that's thanks to our Golden Pig, which is our number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Zada Hedron Grinder. She's a 3-3 Goblin Ally that costs 3 in a red. She has whenever you cast an instant or sorcery that only targets Zada Hedron Grinder, copy that spell for each other creature you control that the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So each of those blink spells that we just went over outside of Ghostly Flicker can meet that requirement. When we use one of those blink spells to only target Zada, it's going to copy for every single one of our creatures. So putting it in simpler terms, if we blink Zada, we blink our entire board. When we do this, we're going to get a ton of triggers and can easily close out the game quickly with the right cards. Zada essentially takes our blink spells and multiplies their effectiveness. She makes some of our best cards in this deck even better. And that's what makes her the Golden Pig. But outside of Zada, we've got other ways to blink our board too. So now let's move on to tactic number 7, Everyone Blinked. First up there's Eerie Interlude, which is a fantastic card in this deck. It says exile any number of target creatures you control. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So essentially for just 3 mana we can protect and blink our entire board. Next up there's Legion's Initiative, which is going to give our red creatures plus 1 plus 0 and our white creatures plus 0 plus 1. But it's actually in this deck for its ability. By paying red-white, we can exile Legion's Initiative and exile all creatures we control. And at the beginning of the next combat, those creatures come back with haste. So it's a fantastic effect to just leave on the board until we need it. A somewhat similar card is Planar Guide. By paying 3 and a white and exiling Planar Guide, we can exile all creatures. At the beginning of the next end step, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. And finally, we have a small but repeatable way to blink a creature with Soul Herder. It says whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, put a plus plus one counter on Soul Herder. And then at the beginning of our end step, we can blink a creature. So this card can get huge with this deck, and it also can provide us a ton of value throughout the game. Even just getting Tazri's trigger every single turn for free is a huge amount of value. And we can even double up on our ETBs in other ways too. So now let's move on to tactic number 8, Double the Trouble. First up there's Flame Shadow Conjuring which says, Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. If you do, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature, that token gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So whenever we cast or blink a creature, we can pay red and get a copy of that creature. That gives us yet another ETB on top of being able to attack with that token. A potentially free way for us to get this though is with Mirror March. It says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, flip a coin until you lose a flip. For each flip you won, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. If just a few flips go our way, this can provide us a ton of value. Finally, there's Kindred Charge, which is going to create a temporary creature token of all of our allies. So this gives us a ton of ETBs at once on top of being able to use them for attacking. Now we've talked a lot about our strategy, but what are some ways that we can throw a wrench into our opponent's plans? Let's go through some ways now in tactic number 9, out of the way. First up there's Generous Gift, which is going to destroy target permanent and its controller gets a 3-3 Elephant. That's a trade I'm willing to make any day. Another trade I'm usually willing to make is with Oblation. It says the owner of target non-land permanent shovels it into their library then draws two cards. In most situations, this is usually going to be worth it for us. If we need to draw some cards, we can also target our own non-land permanent too. And again, outside of these pieces of removal, we've got some allies that can help too. But what do we do when our opponents deal with our allies? Let's go through that now in our final tactic, tactic number 10, Brought Back. First up, there's Rally of the Ancestors, which says, Return each creature card with converted mana costs extra less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Exile those creatures at the beginning of your next end step, exile Rally of the Ancestors. So while this doesn't permanently get us back our creatures, it can get us a ton of ETBs. But a card that can do both is March from the Tomb. It says, Return any number of target ally creature cards with total converted mana cost 8 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. For the most part, the average converted mana cost of our allies is pretty low, so we can get back a few cards with this. And it can just take a few of our key pieces entering and triggering for us to win. General Tazri can be very powerful in the Blink deck and a ton of fun to play. Again, I just want to thank Juan for supporting this channel for over a year as a general tier patron. If you also want to support this channel or want your own deck deck dedicated to you, consider becoming a patron. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, we're running Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap and sacrifice to search our library for base land and put in play tapped. Next up, there's Command Tower, which can tap for any color in this deck. And then there's Exotic Orchard, which can tap to add one mana of any color that landed opponent controls could produce. Next up, there's Unclaimed Territory, which can tap for a color, so it can tap to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, but we can only spend that mana on ally spells. An ally and campmate can do the exact same thing, but we can also pay one to tap and sacrifice it to return target ally we control to its owner's hand. Next up, we're going to be running all 10 Trilands, which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for one of three colors. And then we're running each Vivid Land, which enter the battlefield tapped with two charge counters on them, they tap for one mana, or we can tap to remove a charge counter from them to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Finally, we've got 15 basic lands, 5 will be a plains, 4 will be a forest, 3 will be an island, 2 will be a mountain, and 1 is a swamp. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. 
The average general Tazri EDH rack deck will set you back $237.76. Our deck is going to be much more affordable coming in at $49.81. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's upgrade this deck by adding a Chromatic Lantern and taking out Edge of Autumn. When it comes to completely fixing your mana, there are a few better tools than Chromatic Lantern. Next up, we're going to be adding in Panharmonicon and taking out Captain's Claws. Doubling up our ETBs with Panharmonicon is huge for this deck. And then we're going to add in Conjurer's Closet and take out Ghostly Flicker. Conjurer's Closet is a fantastic way to get a free blink each turn. Next up, let's add in Dead Eye Navigator and take out Planar Guide. Just having to pay 2 mana to blink a creature is huge. And then let's add in Brago King Eternal and take out Munda. As long as we can get Brago through, he can essentially blink our entire board every single turn. And finally, let's add in Rite of Replication and take out Kindred Charge. Rite of Replication can be a game-ending card with the right target. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this deck tech are. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.